Hi, uh, I'm going to teach you on uh, properties of uh, molding sand. A large variety of molding material is used in foundries for manufacturing molds and cores. They include molding sand, system sand, uh, backing sand, facing sand, potting sand, and core sand, and so on. So the choice of the molding material is uh, completely depend on their processing property. Uh, so now I'm going to discuss about the general properties is required for uh, molding materials. So these are the general properties which is required. Uh, one is uh, refractiveness, second uh, permeability, flowability, collapsibility, adhesiveness, green strength, dry strength, and odd strength. Also, uh, by this video, we are going to discuss the main ingredients of uh, any molding sand or um, base sand, binders, uh, moisture, all, all, uh, and uh, additives. So, will be discussed later. First, uh, we will be discussing on uh, properties of uh, molding sand. Refractiveness. This is refers to the sand ability to withstand the temperature of the liquid metal being cast without breaking down. So for example, uh, some sand only need to withstand 650 degrees Celsius if casting aluminum alloys, whereas steel needs a sand that will withstand 1500 degrees Celsius. So sand with too low refractiveness will melt and fuse to the casting. Second one is uh, permeability. Uh, this refers to the sand ability to exhaust gases. When we pour the molten metal, there are many gases are produced, such as hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and steam, which should be leave the mold. Otherwise. The casting defects will be subjected, such as blow holes will be formed, maybe gas holes also. It's occurred in the casting. So, the permeability pr property is very much important. The second one, flowability. Uh, flowability. It is a property of a sand to respond the molding process so that when ramped or compacted then it will be flow all around the pattern finally we take the desired shape of an object i mean shape of the mold the high flowability of the sand is desirable for the sand to get compacted to a uniform density and to get a good impression of the pattern in the mold Next one is the collapsibility. So this is the ability of the sand to be easily stripped off the casting after it has solidified. If the sand with the poor collapsibility will adhere strongly to the casting. Next one is adhesiveness. Ability of the molding sand to stick with the walls of the molding boxes. Next, green strength. The molding sand that contains moisture is termed as a green strength. So the molding sand should possess some water content, moisture content. That is termed as a green sand. The green sand particles must have the ability to hold tightly to each other to impart sufficient strength to the mold. So the green strength must have enough strength so that the constructed mold retain its shape. Uh, next one is uh, dry strength. It is the ability of the molding material to retain the exact shape of the mold cavity in the dry condition and to withstand the metallic static pressure of the liquid material. When the molten metal is poured into the mold, 
the sand around the mold cavity is quickly converted into dry sand as the moisture in the sand is evaporates due to heat of the molten metal when we used to pour into the mold at this stage the molding sand must possess the sufficient strength to retain the exact shape of the mold cavity also at the same time it must be able to withstand this pressure metallostatic pressure next one is hard strength it is the ability of the molding material to retain the exact shape of the mold cavity at an elevated temperature like uh, as soon as the moisture is eliminated the sand would reach at the high temperature when the when the metal in the mold is still in liquid state liquid state the strength of the sand that is required to hold the shape of the cavity that is called hard strength so these are the important property will be learned next chapter we will be going to teach we will be going to learn about the ingredients of molding sand first one is a base sand second a binder third moisture fourth additives so let me discuss one by one first i am going to discuss about base sand so base sand why the base sand is used the base sand is normally used for to provide the refractiveness there are many types one is uh, silica sand olivine sand chromite sand zircon sand the main composition of the base sands are 70 to 85 percentage should present typical typically 70 to 85 percentage maximum 85 percentage should be present along with the binder moisture as well as a additive so these are the ingredients is much important so let me discuss one by one first one is a silica sand uh, silica sand is the most commonly used sand because of its great abundance you may, you may found this silica sand on a beach on the river beds etc the fusion point of the pure silica is about 1760 degree celsius so for high melting point casting such as uh, when we pour the steel molten metal uh, the minimum uh, the um, silica sand should be 98 percentage pure silica can be used however for the any low melting point metals such as a cast iron or uh, any non ferrous metal a lower purity sand can be used between 94 to 98 percentage pure silica sand can be used Our next one is uh, olivian sand as you know olivian sand is a mixture of uh, ortho silicates of iron and magnesium from the mineral dunite actually the main advantage is free from silica therefore it can be used with the basic metal such as a magnesium steel and uh, one more advantage is include the low thermal expansion the high thermal conductivity also high fusion point so these are the great advantage of uh, olivine sand and followed by chromate sand and zircon sand chromate sand actually is a solid solution of spinels the main advantage are uh, low percentage of silica a very high fusion point 1856 degree celsius and uh, very high thermal conductivity but the disadvantage is uh, costliness Uh, last one is a zircon sand is a compound of approximately 2/3 of zircon oxide 1/3 of silica it has the highest fusion point of all the base sand at 
about 2600 degrees celsius and it's a very low thermal expansion also high thermal conductivity next one is a binder binder should be added with the base sand about 10 to 20 percentage binder maybe to act as a binder along with the water to impart the tensile and shear strength to the molding sand so the different types of binders are as follows binders are added to base sand to bond the sand particle together that is uh, it is uh, going to be glued glue that hold the mold together so clay and water oil resin and uh, sodium silicate clay and water actually a mixture of uh, clay and water is a most commonly used binder you know there is a two types of uh, clay commonly used one is a bentonite and another one is a kaolinite next one is oil oil such as uh, mm, vegetable oils marine oils and edible oils are used as a binder next one is a resin resin binders are natural or synthetic it possesses a high melting point content actually uh, there are two common type resin one is a urea formaldehyde and another one is a phenol formaldehyde resin actually phenol formaldehyde resin have a higher heat resistance than uh, urea formaldehyde and also cost less next one is uh, sodium silicate sodium silicate is a high strength binder used with uh, silica molding sand to cure the binder carbon dioxide gas is used which create the uh, some reaction uh, next one is a uh, moisture actually moisture should be present in the molding sand about 3 to 6 percentage Uh, it is mainly to activate the clay and also to provide the plasticity generally the, the clay acquires its bonding action only in the presence of required amount of moisture the amount of uh, water used should be properly controlled because this is because of the part of water which coats the surface of the clay flax it is used to help in bonding while the remainder helps in improving the plasticity Uh, finally we are going to discuss about the additives additives should be present uh, in the base sand about uh, 1 to 6 percentage to enhance the desired sand property generally the additives are added to the molding compound uh, to improve the following characteristic one is a surface finish dry strength refractiveness and cushioning properties thank you for oh. I hope you will learn uh, something different from the textbook so kindly go through my presentation and give your feedback in online thank you very much